The first step of making architecture is to visit the site. It's the site that gives us clues as to how to design. Of course we have a program and we have thoughts about form, but it's really the site that is the most important at the beginning stage. In fact, we should know the site as well as we know our own backyard. The site is our friend for the whole process of designing. It's what we should keep returning to, keep understanding, seeing it uh, during the day, at night, uh, in the rain, in the sun. It's the giver of the original ideas. Uh, of course, uh, the program and the forums and all the rest is important, but it's the site that starts it. So what you're about to see is a site visit to the North End, which is where we're doing a project for design of a house um, on the sides of buildings and on the roofs of the buildings. And then later in the same area, the same site, we will be designing a community place. So the following is that first visit to the site. What do you think? Huh? Challenging. You can see the church from here, the nave of it, through there. Yeah, I think if you knocked on the door and, you know, you could probably see the inside of that window. Uh, there's a church and monastery or school there, I think. I think it's connected. And, of course, you're on the roof of it. So. you got to attach yourself to the side yeah, of that. Yeah, it's, it's on the roof a little bit, and then it yeah. So it's going to be hanging off. And we do have to think about how structure is going to work in some general way. And we'll get David Whitney back. Sometimes you're going to cantilever out. Sometimes there's going to be braces. You could run things down to the ground. You have no um, uh, limitations of what you can do. But we do want to be structural. You could hang over the side. And structurally, it would hold on. You know. uh, for instance, who has the vent site? That two vents, but the one that hangs over. Okay, both of them. No, no yours is on the side, and one hangs over. Yeah, so that one could hang over, uh, almost like a shelf coming over. The other one is going to attach itself to the to the side. Um, what can anybody see from here that relates to our problem? Say again? Right, and we, however, later, right across the street, that's our job, is design a place for us to be, which would include a playground, could it include a playground? That's our site, right here, where that, where that playground is, is part of our site, but also all that area in there. And certainly this is a place also that, that could be used that way. Uh, this has a special meaning, and that's part of your site cluing, finding out why it's here, why all the buildings are here, for that matter. What else do you see? Look around, quick, behind me. Huh? Yeah, someone's done what we're doing, very modestly. Uh, they've added already, in a way, on top of the roof. And on the side, yeah. So they've done sort of what we're doing, but in a very conservative way. I'm not suggesting you be conservative. I do think if you went down to uh, Paul Revere's Mall and uh, go to the Old North Church and look at that one that's hanging on the side, it's more interesting architecture. And it's interesting because I think it fits into the North End. So part of the issue of this project, like the quarry, is how you fit what you're doing into the context. But now the context is different, obviously. But it doesn't mean it has to be brick and cloney or whatever. We are sitting on the dock of the water, of the old water. I think somebody might find this out as far as your clue, but this is the original site and the water was right there. As you may know, may, May I have that growing just for a second? 
that's why the street is curved because that used to be the, in fact, I think it's still, it says North Street. It was, a, it was the original street along the dock. So this is all water. This was solid. As you know, Boston over the years has filled in tremendously. All Back Bay is, is filled. All South End is filled. Uh, all Cambridge is filled. Where we are is all filled also. So it's a, it's a habit of cities to do that, to fill up the water. What about the person that's got this one up here? Phil, Philip, he's got an interesting issue. How does he do, how does he make a form up there that relates to that little curve, or does he? That's a context issue, just like the quarry. How does he? What does he do? But he could relate to that, and at the same time, the top of it, the sky form that we talk about, could be something entirely different. So it's the same issues as before. Land form, but the land is up in the sky, and the middle, and the sky. And the sky can be something quite different. It doesn't have to be the same. What I don't want you to do is to try to, as in the quarry, imitate the context. We are trying to add something that relates, but not necessarily the same. Otherwise, you end up with little kind of Walt Disney, colonial, whatever, whatever stuff, but, which is not the issue. But it does, as you can see, our site, which is over there for the community, is quite a bit lower than where we are. Not quite a bit, but lower than this, and then lower still than over here. It's going uphill slightly. Now, this area is what we like to build the eighth scale out of cardboard which is the equivalent to our quarry, but instead of a place, now we have sort of a path. We're relating to each end of the street. On the other hand, I suggest that you probably, when you're done building, almost everybody can wave to somebody. She can wave to Philip uh, and Stacy. So there'll be little sub-communities. If you're close together in a site, you're welcome to explore connections. This is like the quarry, and you now are detectives. A good architect, in my opinion, starts with the site. This is our site. So you want to learn as much as you can about the site. And there are different kinds of information. Obviously, there's architectural form. You probably can find any kind of form you want in this site. In fact, there's a little surprise around the corner, if you haven't seen it, of a little guy sticking. Do you see it on the corner? sticking on the side, a little bay window. There's all kinds of bay windows up there. So form and materials is one clue that we're looking for. But equally important is people and what they're doing. What's happening here? I mean, look at what's happening right around us. There are tourists from Iowa and Ohio and all over the country walking around, but there are also residents. You can see, you can almost tell the difference. Who's who? Uh, on weekends, you'll find uh, kids playing in the street. You go to the Paul Revere Mall this afternoon, and you'll find you may find kids and tourists going through. So it's a mixture. You're adding to that mix. Be good to know something about who your neighbors are, even though we're building in this canyon. Because the next problem of the community place is how to bring everybody together, including yourself. There are other clues. There's his historic clues. What's the history? Why is this place? Why is the North End like the North End? What makes it different than the Back Bay? Why? Uh, why are the streets like this? I know why, but you, you, but you should find out. So there's, there's history um, of the place. Those are clues. Um, there's real clues. Philip was probably going to bring back somebody's steps or something. You, know? uh, you don't have to bring something back. Why, why don't you bring back his... Uh, what I call a clue, which is something in your head or something physically. So once again, when we're back in the studio, we can visualize the site as well as your own backyard, like the quarry. It's the same thing, except it's different. So you start to think about how you're going to add something to the, and I'm using this one as an example, to the side of that building <clears throat> through some sketches. It seems to me that 
this person has to do something vertically. I mean, the, the, the house is going to be on several lo levels, I would think. There's a limit to how far you can cantilever off. Whereas on top of this roof, it could be horizontal. Philip up there could be horizontal and vertical. He's not the highest. Um, and who has the one right next to our community space? Not the ventilator tower, but over there. Sorry, one? One. That's not Kelly. Yeah. Kelly. Oh, that's right. Kelly has that. That one is important because she <clears throat> kind of overlooks the whole area. She's going to be the person who's going to be kind of the gatekeeper of our community area later. Who has uh, number 12? 12 is an interesting one because you're on the roof and you're over the side and you're a little bit on the outer lim limits of, the, of our community. Almost everybody else forms some communities. That one does too. It connects with three. Who is three? So there's, there's a little connection between the two of you. And who's 13? You're 13? Yeah. So there's a community of 12, 13, and 3. They're very close. OK, what I'd like to have you do is have a good time. Which, Talk to. Which Paul Hill's mall, by the way? I'll, I'll show you. But I, I would like to ask you to just kind of nose around, talk to people, um, look and see, and see what you can bring back. See what, how many different things you can find that might influence what you're designing. That's one. The second is to go to Paul Revere's Mall, which is the next street over, which is uh, Hanover, and go up Hando Hanover about two or three blocks, and it's on your left by the fire st um, station. Go through Paul Revere's Mall to the North Church. That's where the lanterns were. On the other side to the right, you've got to go all the way up to the Paul Revere's, uh, sorry, the North Church, and then come back along the other side, you'll find a little quiet courtyard and find that building that I spoke about that is hanging off the side. So that's two things. But walk around, enjoy yourself, and have a cannoli or coffee.